Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, in case you're new here, or you don't sit there and watch every random off the wall video I make, this is a CNC machine I made I know, a year or two ago to just, you know, make random projects and things. But today, we're gonna be using it to make some custom gaskets. So let's get started. All right, the way I, I do this, I, I usually start with something. So let's go grab a gasket, we'll scan it, and then we'll take it over to the software. All right, for this we're going to need a scanner, the gasket you want to make, and a little ruler. Let's get these bad boys loaded in here. I like to put the ruler kind of right up against the scan bed there. And the gasket can pretty much go wherever it wants. And let's scan away. All right, now let's head back to the garage and use the other computer. Now. Most videos you're going to come across, people are going to use screen recording software to uh, make this type of video. You won't find that here, my friends. Oh, no. Okay, Fusion 360 is loaded and ready to go. So let's go ahead and, uh, the top here, insert the canvas. And, uh, insert from computer. There's my gasket folder. We're going to be making this one. Put on the bottom plane here. And okay. Let's make it flat. Rotate. Zoom in. All right, there is a extremely gray version of what we're making. Don't know what that's about, but whatever. Uh, we're going to go over here on the left to canvas. We're going to right click, calibrate, and this is where scanning this ruler down here at the bottom really comes in handy. So I'm going to go right at the beginning of the two, and right on the in the beginning of the three line and we're going to tell the computer that that is one inch. We then zoom in, zoom out, and our image is now calibrated so whenever we draw a circle or anything it's going to know exactly how big that circle needs to be. So let's create sketch we got our sketch ready to go. Um, I usually like to do the circles first, so let's do those. Um, let's do a two-point circle. Now, you don't want to go right on the edge. Go in a little bit. No word about there. So, in reality, the uh, diameter of the circle should be 0.2875, so we are going to be just a hair bigger, which is perfectly fine. Alright, so there's our first circle, so we'll just go around here to all of them. All right, so the easy stuff there is done. Now let's do the uh, the inside. A lot of arches are going to be needed here.
all of our arc should be done as well as the exterior of our gasket. So now we just need to go play connect the dots with our line. Alright, well we're done enough there. Let's hit finish sketch. There's our gasket. We're going to press pull. We'll give it some thickness. And we're going to go 0.0, let's call it 4. The material, gasket material you buy usually comes, you know, 32nd of an inch thick. So I think 0 0.03 whatever is 132nd. But we'll round and go 0 0.04. And there is our gasket, kind of drawn out. Now, the, I'm not entirely thrilled with how this water passage corner came out, but at the same time, I don't really care because, yeah, it's just an example. And you can be a little off here without any real issue. So, on top, let's go to design, go to manufacture. All right, we're gonna do a new setup. Part here. And by setting the mode to uh, relative size box and no additional stock, we get exactly what we want as far as size and thickness. So we're good there. It's okay. Now we are going to do a 2D contour to cut this whole thing out. We'll select pretty much everything we want to cut out. All right, that should be all of them. Should be pretty, pretty easy, huh? Select our tool. All right, we're going to use a one eight inch flat end mill, or one eighth inch router bit here for it. All right, right there we have a one eighth inch flat end mill. Looks good to me. 30, 30, 30, so it's going to go a little slow, but who cares? We're going to disable coolant. We don't have that option anyway. Bottom height is stock bottom, but I'm pretty sure selected contours will work just fine for that. Yep. Very good. Passes, don't really care. No additional stock is really what we're checking to make sure. So stock to leave, it's not checked. So, yeah, we should be fine. We are good to go. Let's go ahead and simulate. Uh, according to this, it'll take two minutes to cut this out. So that's uh, that's not too bad. Cut passes look fine. Yep, it's gonna have some work to do, but who cares? All right, let's close this. We'll do our post process on it. Alright, saved on the drive. Let's take it over the CNC machine and uh, cut it out. Alright, before we begin here, we got to get a, uh, a work hold down system started. Now, I'm a firm believer in the old tape it down approach. A couple of strips of blue tape down. Go down as a piece of cardboard. Now we hit.
hit it with some glue. This is just super glue. I bought some of the uh, Loctite blue professional super glue and it worked fine and I haven't tried anything else because that works fine. So what I'm going to do is put the cardboard down, fourth couple of times, and it'll glue itself down. Now I'm going to use the same method to glue down my gasket paper I have here to the actual cardboard. Now I've never tried this, usually I just glue tape to tape, but I'm going to uh, see if I can just glue it straight down to the cardboard, see how well that works. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll figure it out pretty quickly, I think. Alright, I got the gasket paper all glued in there, got the new router bit, we're going to set our X, Y, and Z first. So, I'm just going to go in the top corner. Now, something you got to remember with the, uh, the Z coordinate here. It's only going to drop the router bit down a hair more than a 32nd of an inch, which isn't much. We're cutting into, it's not soft, but relatively spongy material. So I'm not going to set the router bit right on top and say it right there. I'm actually going to plunge the router bit into the material a little bit just to make a dent. And then it's going to move it down further than that. The reason I do that is I'm ensuring it's going to cut fully through that paper. Good plan, huh? We'll see how it goes. Alright, I've got my program loaded up. Let's zero these guys out. And we really should be good to go. I'll put the camera up so you can see the uh, cutting action and I'll hit start. about three minutes later we have the gasket now I don't know if this is really gonna work that well being all fuzzy like this let's go ahead and pull it out and see what we're dealing with now as you can see there's a lot of little furry hairs here from our uh, routering process but I've got a, a little trick for that too all right this is a piece of cling spore 600 grit sandpaper Now, in fairness, this was just to hold it down while I went over with the sanding block, but sometimes I'll use the sanding block and rub this down over the paper. But either way, now we have a pretty nice, well-cleaned up little gasket. Let's go compare it to the original and see how it looks. Now, before I show you, one thing I want you to keep in mind. Right here, it was cutting out cardboard where there wasn't any gasket paper. I didn't quite have the uh, paper aligned as well as I should have. My mistake. No big deal. All right, here is mine, here is the original. On top of each other here, all of our holes align, all of our cutouts align. Everything is pretty darn perfect. You can see here where it's just a little thinner than it should be. Otherwise, it's a pretty, pretty nice copy. Set it on here. 
Everything aligns perfectly fine. So will this work? Absolutely, freaking lutely. Now, there's another thing to discuss here. This gasket is five bucks new. Why waste your time cutting out your own when you could just buy one for five bucks? It's not the cost, it's the time. To buy this gasket is five bucks, right? If it's not in stock at whatever online parts supplier you use, they gotta order it, which will take another seven days. When they get it, they then need to ship it to you, which can take another three to seven days on top of it. Meanwhile, your project is sitting there in pieces awaiting a simple $5 gasket for two weeks. That is the problem. This saves you time. You can make gaskets you need on the fly, cut perfectly, in a matter of, you know, 30 minutes maybe. And if you get good at it, five. Now this, this took me 15 minutes to draw up. Um, if you watch people that are a little bit better with the... Uh, Fusion 360 there, like this old Tony, he could probably whip that up in five minutes. It's just my experience with uh, Fusion isn't quite that good yet, and it still didn't take me very long. So let's uh, let's try something different. Let's go ahead and close our gasket there. All right, let's make another one here. Let's make. Kawasaki gasket. All right, so now important calibrating the image. Start right at one and then right at two. Whoops. One inch. All right. Let's go top again. Create a new sketch in the bottom plane. Let's pop in a couple of circles. So it says 50 seconds to make. It's probably about true given the uh, size of this thing. Now, in four minutes of design time and 30 seconds of machining work, in about five minutes, you can have yourself this gasket, uh, which has long been discontinued from the manufacturer, and the only place you're going to get it is on eBay, which at best, this thing is probably 30 years old, for eight, nine, ten, and then five days to get it to you. So five minutes later, here's your carburetor gasket. Now this paper here that I just used for that is the off-the-shelf AutoZone $9 for a roll special. Uh, it's 30 second of an inch thick, pretty pretty standard normal everyday gasket stuff. But let's let's try it with something with a little more quality. If you notice on the back of this gasket, it says you know TN9014. So that's not the part number of the gasket. That's the actual material the gasket was made out of. 
So I went ahead and picked up some. Now this is blue, not black, but you know, as good as I can get. All right, let's see what happens. And five minutes later, new gasket. Comparing it to the old, it's, it's identical. Well, identical enough. Now in fairness, the Felpro bulk material did clean up a lot nicer than this stuff, but the problem is this is also just a hair thicker than this, but this is the actual size. Uh, either one I'm sure would work fine. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, that's great if you have a gasket to copy. What do you need this silly process for? Well, my friends, a little outside the box thinking. Now, are you going to get rich making an eBay business selling gaskets? Probably not. By the time you've sold enough gaskets to recoup the cost of the machine, your uh, router head here is probably going to die, and you're going to need more router bits. It's just a nightmare and probably no money in it. But for the average person who likes working on their own stuff and happens to have a CNC machine, or if you're on the fence about buying or making one, maybe this will help you. You can easily make your own gaskets to install your own parts without having to sit around and wait for the uh, lengthy shipping times. Like I said, it won't save you any money, but it will save you a lot of time. 
Now you may also say to yourself, well, I don't need a router for that. I just get a carburetor and you know, you put it over the gasket interior, give it a little tap and it makes a little imprint and you just go cut it out. I've tried that. I've never had any look, luck with it. It always just looks like trash. This has so far been the best way I've found to make your own gasket. I've tried using one of those uh, little uh, cricket cutting machines or circuits. Crickets? I think they're called crickets. Anyway, tried using one of those. It it doesn't really cut the material out well enough. It will make scribe marks in it if you want to come back and cut it out later with your own X-Acto knife. It just doesn't have the power to uh, cut through your standard gasket material. Uh, you could also say, well, okay, wouldn't a laser cutter work a lot better? Maybe, but you would have to take a whole bunch of passes at it, and it may not really even cut it because this Felpro stuff, yeah, that's standard low-grade quality gasket material. But this stuff is some high temp oil gas. It's oil, gas, sunlight, water resistant, and heat too. So I don't know if laser cutter is even going to be able to touch this stuff. It might, but again, you're going to have to make a bunch of passes through it. Router, no problem. Now I have tried a bunch of different bits. I tried using a, um, a chamfer tool. It kind of worked, but it, it couldn't really cut all the way through it very well. I wanted to try to use one of these uh, rotary files. It's a really, really fine point and it's got some pretty good cuts on it. Uh, this one is left over from the 80s and I haven't uh, gotten around to buying a replacement to give it a shot. But pretty much any router bit I've tried has worked fine. Now in the router right now was the single flute 8 inch bit and it seemed to work pretty well. There's not that much little furry sticking out on this paper. Um, let me see if I can find one of the other cuts. Uh, this was done with a two flute quarter inch bit and it's a it's an old bit and it was probably dull but it's it's got a little more furries going on on the edges now in all fairness i didn't actually cut out the carburetor gasket this is actually a factory one i just did it for kind of a kind of showing an example you could really get away with just taking a picture of the part if you have a little ruler inside of there and even then honestly you don't need the ruler you just need one known dimension to uh, calibrate the image and then you can you know basically trace the gasket all you want. Now an oscillating head drag knife is probably the commercial way to cut out these gaskets. An oscillating head drag knife is really expensive and it's uh, I don't think it's worth it. The router works fine so I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with this process. Well that's it for my video. Let me know what you think. Um, thoughts, comments, let me know. Um, next couple of videos I'm going to be putting out are some uh, things I'm working on. You'll see these gaskets in use. And you'll kind of get an idea of what you can do with them. So, stay tuned. Anyway, like I said, comments, let me know. I'd like to hear your opinion. See you all later.